Center for Responsive Reports, Atiku Abubakar lobbying the U.S. and his election loss. Continued sweltering heat affecting many Nigerians, hitting them in the wallets. In international news, Brexit countdown, three days to divorce unless Prime Minister wins extension of EU. And in sport, Canada's women's soccer team remain undefeated after beating Super Falcons in Spain. This is ANN News. I am Olajumo Kel Latunji. The Center for Responsive Politics based in Washington, D.C. has reported the presidential candidate for the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Bubakar, who lost the recent general election to incumbent President Muhammad Buhari, has begun lobbying the United States to recognize him as Kurt, the authentic president. ANN's Today Show reports. The report says Abubakar has enlisted the assistance of two high-powered Washington, D.C. lawyers for help in his legal challenge after his election loss. Abubakar filed a legal suit challenging the election results because of what he said were voting irregularities and violence. The former vice president is said to be close to those in President Trump's world, so he is said to have hired River Levinson, who worked with Paul Manafort and Brian Ballard a Trump major fundraiser. The Center for Responsive Politics says it had ac access filings by agents of foreign political principles, which show that Bruce Fine and his law firm, Fine and Delval PLLC, have registered as foreign agents on Atiku Abubakar's behalf. Fine was associate deputy attorney general in Ronald Reagan's administration. The report also says a Nigerian lawyer, Lloyd Uku, is mentioned in the agreement between Abubakar and Fine. He is described as a Nigerian barrister and trusted confidant of Abubakar. The report says his role is to assist in the operations of the U.S. Situation Room. The Center for Responsive Politics is a nonprofit, nonpartisan research group based in Washington, D.C., that tracks the effects of money and lobbying on elections and public policy. It maintains a public online database of its information. Tundi Osho, ANN News. Nigeria has been advised to emulate the way Trinidad and Tobago develops and utilizes gas resources for the benefits of its people. The island's high commission in Nigeria, William Wallace, says the country should copy what happens in his country, where he said citizens and residents do not own generators because they have 100% electricity from gas. Wallace was speaking at the Nigerian Oil and Gas Opportunity Fair, organized by the Nigerian Contents Development and Monitoring Board in Yenigua, the Bayelsa State Capital. Speaking of infrastructure as key enabler for opportunities in the oil and gas sector, Wallace advised Nigeria to utilize its gas resources to benefit the people. Like his country, Wallace says Nigeria should take charge of the hydrocarbon by participating in the value chain of the gas sector. Sam Imbakwe International Cargo Airport in Oweri, Imo State, was the scene of panic and pandemonium on Monday afternoon. When fire got at the arrival section, eyewitnesses say ongoing renovations affected that wing of the airport. The fire service was credited with timely arrival and spirited efforts to quench the inferno, which raged for almost an hour. Their intervention was said to have helped in averting serious havoc at the airport. Over the weekend, Nigeria tasted some relief from the intense heat that had scorched the nation for more than months now. The persistent heat wave had become quite alarming and unbearable for many. Enes Dusi Adeyemi reports. Nigerians have been enduring extreme heat since March, with the temperatures reaching as high as 40 degrees Celsius recently. The sweltering heat has greatly affected the lives and also finances of ordinary Nigerians, especially in fuel costs for generators when electricity is unstable. Experts warn the weather pattern might continue for some time. First implication is that climate change has become a public health phenomenon. So when you have heat waves, the body is dehydrated, 
the young, the elderly, people that live sedated lives. These are the kind of people that have, you know, immediate health, you know, reactions. If the weather is hot, the solution that people will be looking for is something that is chilled. And people, people that are not very rich, they don't, they don't buy bottled waters. They prefer the sachet water that they can buy two at once. That's 50 cl. They can buy 100 cl with 20 naira. As the high temperatures persist, you are advised to stay hydrated and to protect yourself from the rays of the sun when you are tired. Experts warn that excessive heat can have damaging effect on people's health. It can also lead to dehydration, heat exhaustion and stroke, and sometimes even death. And scientists are telling us that heat waves now do cause morbidity, uh, deaths, fatalities, you know, and diseases in, in the human body. And that's uh, the level of public health. The harsh weather patterns are expected to continue until May, and environmental experts have called on authorities to make long-term plans to slow down the effect of climate change by reducing carbon emission and impose ban on tree cotton. Lucy Adeyemi, ANN News. Now, just most really loves seafood. The federal government says more than $60 million is spent every year on fish imports. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Al Jogwe, gave the figure when the Netherlands Ambassador Marion Copen visited him in Abuja. Ogbe released a statement seeking the Netherlands' support in areas of research, cattle breeding, and aquaculture. The minister says Nigeria is ready to deepen collaboration with the Netherlands, especially in pit seats and seedlings to boost agricultural production in the country. Ambassador Capain said the delegation was in Ogwe's ministry to explore areas of collaboration for the development of the agriculture sector, especially in improved seeds, horticulture, aquaculture, poultry and nutrition. Coming up, African stories. Ethiopian government looks to end ethnic violence and promote peace. And later, international news. Brexit to happen in three days unless there is an extension. You are watching ANN. <sighs> this used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value All-in-One Plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some talk time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra talk time with some data. And when I'm abroad, I automatically browse, chat, and call right on the same plan. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls. Whichever one you prefer, MTN Extra Value is made just for you. Welcome back. This is Edit News. Now to African Stories. A Kenyan Wildlife Service official has confirmed that at least 10 buffaloes have died at Lake Nkaru National Park following an anthrax outbreak. The deaths have thrown wildlife officials into panic mode as the fear of infection might spread and cause more damage. Anthrax infection is caused by bacteria and it commonly affects both wild and domestic animals. A wildlife service spokesperson disclosed on Sunday the regional laboratory in Nakura tested samples and confirmed the animals died of anthrax. The anthrax outbreak has put in grave danger lives of many other wild animals at the national park, including the endangered species like the white rhinos which easily interact with buffaloes. The last time there was an anthrax outbreak at the 51-year-old Lake Nakuru National Park was in 2015. At least 100 buffaloes and two rhinos reportedly died of the infectious disease at the time. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has been praised for bringing enormous change to the country. He has led the country to a peace agreement with longtime foe Eritrea and Ethiopians both at home and abroad are hopeful the country will continue to make strides. But ethnic tensions and violence are on the rise and the Prime Minister wants to do something about it. 
The report by the government said, compared to the situation when Prime Minister Abi Ahmed took power a year ago, Ethiopia has significantly regained its peace now. All the security concerns and troubles noticed the country have been corrected after exerted all-rounded efforts. Now we need to work for forgiveness, vengeance and hostility must be taken out of the minds of our people. We are simply institutionalizing our efforts for a sustainable peace. The one-year-old Abiy Ahmed administration has so far freed more than 10,000 prisoners, including those jailed due to their political views, as well as journalists. Ethiopia is now undertaking an overall reform on its intelligence services, defense forces, and the federal police. There is more. Before, the army only had ground, air and special forces under it. But now, due to the reform agenda, we have included the establishment of the Navy, Space and Cyber Forces. Why Navy in a landlocked nation, if you ask? Because it is necessary to equip ourselves with the necessary and timely preparedness so as to repel any threat effectively. Still, Ethnic-based violence is a number one security concern for Ethiopia. The main worry now and the cause of conflicts in different places of the country is ethnic-based politics. We need a political solution for this. We have established a system which can promote peaceful coexistence in Ethiopia. When we return, international news. Brexit in three days could mean crashing out with no deal. A later sport, Super Falcons beaked by Canada. You are watching ANN. Welcome back. This is ANN News in International Stories. Israel is holding its 21st parliamentary elections today with more than 6 million citizens eligible to cast ballots. The vote will largely serve as a referendum on long-seated Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is seeking his fourth consecutive term. If he wins, it will be the fifth term overall. He had a stint in the 1990s. With another victory, Netanyahu will secure a place in history later this year as the longest serving prime minister. He would have surpassed Israel's founding father, David Ben Gurion. He faces tough opposition from his former army chief of staff, Ben Gantz, whose new blue and white party seeks to replace Netanyahu's long dominance Likud. All 120 seats in the Knesset. Israel's parliament are up for grabs. More than 40 parties are competing, but no Israeli party has ever won an outright majority. If that happens in this election, larger parties would be forced to form blocks with smaller allies. If in the end, neither a right wing nor a left wing bloc is able to form a coalition, Israel would face or could face the prospect of a second election in November. It's three days left in the countdown to Brexit. Theresa May is in Berlin and Paris to seek support for a new Brexit delay, while her ministers try to break the deadlock in talks to the Labour Party. More than a week after the United Kingdom was originally supposed to have left the EU, the Prime Minister had said Brexit might never happen as she battles to get a divorce due ratified by a divided parliament. But little sign of a resolution in London, May was visiting Europe's two most powerful leaders, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President Emmanuel Macron to seek support for her request to delay Brexit a second time from April the 12th to the end of June. On the eve of emergency EU summit in Brussels, Chief EU Negotiator Michelle Barnier said the bloc was ready to grant a delay but that duration has got to be in line with the purpose of any such extension. The U.S. State Department has barred 16 Saudi nationals from entering the United States for their role in the mother of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The announcement on Monday by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo comes as the Trump administration faces pressure from Congress on its response to the killing in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul last October. Khashoggi's mother has packed unprecedented international scrutiny of the kingdom's human rights record. 
The State Department's previously revoked visas of nearly two dozen Saudi officials and froze the assets of 17 others. Those barred include Saud al Qatani, a former close advisor to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, also known as MBS, and Mahir Mutreb, the alleged leader of the 15 man execution squad. More families of victims of the line air crash in Indonesia are suing Boeing after its chief executive apologized and said a software update for the Max 8 jet would prevent further disasters. Family members and lawyers said on Monday, CEO Dennis Melinberg's comments last week on an automated flight system was an admission that helps their cases. The anti-small system is expected to have caused the line air crash in October and an Ethiopian Airlines crash in March that also involved the Max 8 jet. The two crashes killed a combined total of 346 persons. At a news conference organized by Jakarta law firm Kalimang and Ponto, families of 11 line air victims said they are joining dozens of other Indonesian families in filing lawsuits against Boeing. Still to come, sport. Super Falcons beaked by Canada. Please stay with us. You are watching ANN. Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay. Hello, baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop. <laughs> you okay, Lizzie? You alright? <laughs> Keep walking down. Keep walking to the left. Yes. You're almost here. Keep going. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back. This is Anna News and Sport. General Secretary of the Niger Football Federation, Dr. Mohamed Sanusi, says the Super Eagles have what it takes to bring home this year's Afghan title from Egypt. He says Niger will spring a surprise by winning the trophy. Sanusi says it won't be easy, but the Super Eagles would excel in Egypt. He also stated that the NFF has given the Super Falcons the best ever preparation ahead of the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. He said the team should do very well in France. Canada's women national soccer team remain undefeated this year after defeating Nigeria 2-1 in Spain. Canada's win over the CAF champions brings its 2019 record to 4-2 and marks its first victory over Nigeria in three encounters. Nigeria have qualified for every edition of the FIFA Women's World Cup and are also preparing for France 2019, where they will face Norway, Korea Republic and host France in Group A. That is in the news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on this and other stories, visit our website, anandafrica.net. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. Have a pleasant evening. <laughs>